Uh, my name is Serge Belangi. I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Copenhagen, and I'm also the director of the Pioneer Center for Artificial Intelligence. So uh, I wear different hats. Uh, I direct my own lab, uh, which largely does research in computer vision uh, and topics like object recognition uh, with applications to biodiversity, um, also preventing the spread of misinformation online. Uh, if I'm wearing the hat of the Pioneer Center uh, director, there are uh, seven areas of AI uh, that we focus on. And those range from things like um, networks and graphs or um, signals and decoding. So it could include things like speech recognition on one hand um, or brain decoding on the other. So those are all under the umbrella of the Pioneer Center, and we have co-leads that are in charge of these, um, of these different seven sub-areas of AI. On the professional side, um, my research actually brought me to Denmark coincidentally um, in several ways. One is the, the work that involves uh, fine-grained visual categorization uh, with applications to biodiversity. Um, it turns out that there's an organization that's headquartered uh, in Copenhagen called GBIF. It's the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. So they uh, hold occurrence data for thousands of citizen science and museum efforts uh, for reported sightings of birds or insects, mushrooms, and so on. Um, so it turns out when uh, getting to the point of scaling these uh, computer vision and uh, also um, audio recognition or even genomic type uh, uh, data for recognizing different species of plants and animals and so on, uh, GBIF is actually a fantastic partner for that. So that line of research actually brought me to Denmark on a number of occasions, and I got to know the, um, uh, the academic landscape um, in Denmark. But beyond that, historically, Denmark has been very strong in um, computer science in general. Uh, but also in, within computer vision. Um, many years ago, there was an, a, a sub area of computer vision called scale space. And uh, Scandinavia and Denmark in particular um, was a region that was very strong in scale space. So even as far back as when I was an undergraduate, um, I made visits to, uh, to Copenhagen, to Oslo, to Stockholm, um, Lin Choping, uh, getting to know the researchers that were in that, um, in that area. So there's a tradition already uh, of strength in, in these different areas of AI um, in Scandinavia. Yeah, so with regard to building capacity within Denmark, uh, this is something I think that a lot of countries in Europe are grappling with right now. And it turns out that there are several initiatives that will benefit all of us if we're willing to work together. One of them is ELIS, uh, the European Laboratory for Learning and Information Systems. So ELIS got its start from some of the powerhouses in AI, including Germany, Switzerland, the Netherlands. And uh, it's been around for a few years and they have a unified um, PhD application process. Um, you can think of it as a meta application for PhD students. And this is one of those tricky things where all those different countries are on one hand competing because they want to get the best prospective PhD students from around the world, but they also want that water level to lift everyone up. So what I'm finding so far is that the faculty who are part of Ellis, which I just joined uh, shortly after moving here, we all share each other's posts and advertisements for these PhD and postdoc positions because we want them to come to Europe. They can join the ecosystem, uh, in this case of artificial intelligence within Europe, at which point they will discover many different promising capitals within Europe that are studying these very interesting problems. So at the moment, the visibility of Denmark may not be as high as some of the regions in Switzerland or uh, Netherlands or Germany, but we're moving in that direction. And I think in terms of critical mass within Denmark itself, the Pioneer Center, DIREC, the Data Science Academy, these are all things that were coming together around the same time 
that involve multiple universities working together. I think that part is important. Uh, as a relative newcomer to Denmark, I'm still able to see it through the lens of an outsider and say that if we end up squabbling about which Danish university gets which resource, we all lose. So we have to say at some level, uh, while respecting the necessary competition that has to happen among universities, we should be able to have a unified message and say, first of all, come to Denmark to study AI. That's the headline. Then let's look at the sub area of AI you want to work on. Is it computer vision? Is it socially responsible or, or fair or ethical AI? Is it um, networks and graphs and applications within uh, social media? As you look at that landscape, it could be that the best advisor for you is in Allboard. It could be there in Roskilde. We don't know yet. So I think that it starts with that European context of showing, in much in the same way that Canada got its act together with the Vector Institute, with um, Mila. So different regions of Canada put together resources across different universities, made straightforward uh, processes for PhD students to apply, put together uh, big compute resources, GPU clusters. And so with that kind of inspiration in mind, we're doing the same thing within the Pioneer Center. So I think that that will be one of our challenges is to find that sweet spot on that spectrum between cooperation and competition um, and preferably very close to that cooperation part. Um, so that, that's a big part of what I'm focusing on as the, uh, as the director of the Pioneer Center. So when it comes to reaching out to prospective students, uh, let's say that there are some really promising uh, potential PhD applicants from China or from India who traditionally direct their attention to the top schools in the United States. Um, so how do we address that? How do we change those, um, those well-worn patterns? First of all, it's very hard because these are um, patterns that have been established over decades. Um, I went to some of these schools. I went to Caltech, I went to Berkeley, um, I've worked at Cornell. Um, and I know that uh, those are fantastic institu institutions. They're going to continue um, just on the basis of legacy to get incredible attention from many, many uh, international PhD students. I think that we, we have to have an approach that combines the, the scholarly emphasis with the modern means of reaching out to the students. So the scholarly part is the publications, the open source code, um, the placement of the graduates at top tier labs in academia and industry. So seeing Copenhagen, Aalborg, Aarhus, the .dk um, email address, that kind of thing uh, appearing in publications um, in the affiliation of faculty who are program chairs for major conferences, um, seeing a Danish university in the biography of a student who becomes faculty at a top university, uh, those are all the scholarly dimension. Um, seeing large amounts of citations get racked up on Google Scholar and CS rankings, we need to excel in that dimension. We also need to understand the transformation that's going on in social media that many, many students are finding out about interesting research labs and research techniques from social media. They will find accounts to follow on Twitter that are sharing hot off the presses archive papers that haven't even been formally reviewed, uh, but they're appearing um, on social media, sometimes without any names or affiliations, just a technique, a teaser image, a title, and students are digging into that. They're even implementing or trying out code. Um, and that is kind of a, a, a new frontier for uh, traditional academia to figure out how to uh, reach out through such channels. Um, I won't claim there's any simple solution there, um, but I think it's important to recognize that it is not just through the traditional scholarly channels where we will 
uh, reach the kind of success that we want. Uh, we need to be savvy about these different um, social networking techniques that are, that landscape is changing all the time, but the best thing we can do is talk to the students, find out where they get their information, encourage the faculty within Denmark to send their students um, abroad, which they're already doing, but to send them abroad almost as ambassadors to these top universities, encourage um, all of the Pioneer Center members to um, suggest names for these uh, international colloquia, uh, whether it be virtual or in person, um, get really big names from around the world to come to Denmark, give these talks, um, have distinguished lectures, and, and simply get the word out that something exciting is happening here. It's a good destination if you want to study uh, AI.